All right, by the end of this video, you guys will know exactly how to bulk. It's that time of the year. For a lot of you, it's winter, which means it's officially bulk season. Now, for those of you who may not know, bulking is simply when you are eating in a calorie surplus for a period of time in order to maximize muscle growth. If you don't know what a calorie surplus is, it's simply taking in more calories than you burn, resulting in gaining weight, hopefully the majority being muscle mass. The single goal of a bulk is to pack on as much muscle mass as possible while minimizing fat gain. In this video, I will tell you guys every single thing you should be doing on a bulk related to diet, exercise, and everything in between. Now, before I get into the video, I'm going to ask you to subscribe to my channel. I literally upload like three to five fitness videos a day. If you're looking to build muscle and or lose fat, I 100% guarantee I can help you out. No questions asked. But without further ado, let's get right into the video. Now I am going to start off with protein first instead of calories first, which you'll see why in a minute. For protein, it's pretty simple. Simply take your body weight in pounds and times that number by 0.8 to one. Whatever number you get, that would be about how many grams of protein you should be eating each day on your bulk. Anywhere in that range would be sufficient protein. And yes, it is that black and white. You literally need protein to build muscle. I would try and hit the goal as many days as you can. Now, as far as the calories go, first off, the single worst thing you can do is just stuff your face with as many calories as possible unless you want to get fat. Eat big, get big is such a bull to maximize muscle growth. All you really need to do is eat a few hundred calories above maintenance max. So I recommend just sticking to a moderate calorie surplus. That way it's nice lean muscle tissue and not just a bunch of fat gain. Now, as far as how many calories you should be eating to be in a small surplus, you have a couple options. One, you can put your stats in an online calorie calculator, or honestly, just simply take your body weight in pounds and times that number by 16 to 18. Now, this might vary a little bit based on age, genetics, activity level, etc. But in general, for the vast majority of people watching this video, if you took your body weight in pounds and times that number by 16, that would put you on pace to be in a smaller plus 200 daily calorie surplus. Now, if you multiplied your body weight by 18, on the other hand, that would put you on pace to be in a larger plus 500 daily calorie surplus. If you weigh in a plus 200 calorie daily surplus, that would put you on pace pace to gain about a half a pound in a week. And if you eat in a plus 500 calorie surplus, that would put you on pace to gain about a full pound a week. And that is 100% what I recommend doing on a bulk. I recommend gaining anywhere between half a pound and a full pound a week based on your goals. That way it's nice lean muscle mass and not just a bunch of fat gain. You want a good muscle gain to fat gain ratio, trust me. So if you're a beginner, I would eat in that body weight times 18 plus 500 calorie surplus because when you're a beginner, your body is a muscle building machine and a huge chunk of those calories will go into packing on muscle mass rather than fat gain, assuming you're lifting weights. If you're really skinny and have a ton of weight to gain, I also recommend going down this path. However, if you already have a decent amount of size, you've been training for a few years or don't really have that many pounds to gain, then I would stick closer to the body weight times 16 plus 200 calorie surplus. Because the more advanced you are and the longer you've been training for, the less potential for muscle growth you'll have. You know, muscle building is like this, it kind of plateaus. So if you're like advanced and you're just pounding calories, then you are going to have a much worse muscle gain to fat gain ratio compared to that of a beginner. Now there's going to be two types of people here. There's going to be those people that are like, holy sh how the hell am I going to be able to eat that many calories? I don't have a big appetite at all. How am I going to hit this goal? And then you are going to have the other group of people who are like, oh word, I can eat that many calories. I can get behind that. Now, if you are in that first group of people who have a really tough time gaining weight, here's the issue which is why I started off with protein instead of calories. You are going to 100% have to hit your protein intake goal. That has to be a staple. There is no room for flexibility. Now the issue with this is protein is by far the most saturating macro. In other words, it's really going to fill you up compared to the other macros. So you know, if you're already having a tough time increasing calories and gaining weight now, then you are probably going to have an even tougher time gaining weight if you're hitting your protein goal. Now, if you are in that group of people who is going to have a tough time gaining weight, then there's two solutions. One, eat more fats, like the macro fat. Fats are the most calorie dense macro. For every gram of fat, there's nine calories compared to every gram of carbs or protein that only has four calories. So, you know, I would try and just eat more peanut butter, nuts like almonds and cashews, 
olive oil. All of those foods are extremely calorie dense. For example, one tablespoon of peanut butter is 100 calories. You know you have five tablespoons of peanut butter, bang, that's an extra 500 calories, guys. It's such a small amount of volume for so many calories. Eating more fats would be a great tool to help you hit this calorie intake. Now the second strategy you could use to hit this calorie intake would be to eat more dirty carbs like bagels, cereal, cookies, cake, chips, fast food, and stuff like that. I'm not kidding. If you are too full to hit the remainder of your calorie intake because you are eating clean foods, then what good is that going to do? You literally need to gain weight to bulk and you will never gain weight if you can't get into that calorie surplus. If eating clean foods is stopping you from hitting your calorie intake because you're too full, then you should literally eat dirtier foods that are higher in calories. That should make perfect sense. There is nothing wrong with eating dirty foods as long as you are hitting your macros, guys. That's why I hate when people are like eating clean. Like, no, it's not that black and white. Macros such as protein and calories are that black and white. Eating clean is not. Now, if you're in the second group, you know you already have a big appetite and getting in those calories are not going to be an issue. Then, you know, just pretty much do what you would do to maintain your physique. Just eat a couple hundred extra calories. So say you're having like four tacos at dinner, maybe make that five. Maybe just have like an extra bowl of rice. Maybe just add like a granola bar before you go to bed. Just like a small 200 to 500 calorie increase from what your maintenance calories are should do. So those are by far the two most important diet numbers to hit. I would make every single effort to hit your calorie goal and protein goal as many days as you can. Now, as far as the fats and carbs go, honestly, I wouldn't even bother tracking them. I would just divide it up however you'd like. If it was me personally, I would prefer a higher carb diet. But for muscle building, it doesn't really matter that much. Just hit your total calorie intake and then hit your total protein intake and the carbs and fats will even out. All right, so that's pretty much all it is to the diet section. I know that was a lot. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. Now it's time for the exercise section. So first of all, as far as the workout split goes, I recommend training more frequently if possible. For example, a push-pull leg split where you're training six days a week or a push-pull legs upper lower split where you're training five days a week would be perfect on a bulk. The reason being is because when you're bulking, your body is in an overall anabolic state. You are going to have more energy, you are going to be recovering from your workouts faster, and you are going to want to put those calories to good use. If you are only able to train three to four times a week, that is completely fine. I recommend maybe just increasing the volume of your workouts a little bit, maybe add an extra exercise to each muscle group or just add an extra set to the sets that you are already doing. Now, as far as to what you should be focusing on in the gym and what your goals should be, I strongly recommend focusing on progressing on the compound lifts, such as the bench press, pull-ups, squats, the overhead press, deadlift, etc. Progressing on the compound lifts is the single main way to build muscle and you need to be taking advantage of this during a bulk. It's so much easier to progress and add strength to the compound lifts when bulking because one, you are going to be gaining weight so you are going to be able to lift more. Mass lifts mass. In general, the more you weigh, the more you can lift. And two, like I said, muscle growth is maximized on a bulk. So you also are going to be able to add weight pretty easily because you are simply going to have more muscle mass. You are going to be building muscle. Say you have two people on a bulk and they start off at the same exact body weight and have the same exact body composition. Her Person one goes to the gym, he just dicks around, does all these random exercises, doesn't track progress, has no idea what he's doing. He starts his bulk bench pressing 185 pounds, he gains 10 pounds and is still benching 185 pounds. Person two, on the other hand, goes to the gym with a plan, he's tracking progress, he knows exactly what he hit last workout and exactly what he's going for next workout. Person two starts off his bulk benching 185 pounds and in the same time period as person one, he is able to get his bench press up to 225 pounds. Person two is going to significantly look better than person one. His chest is going to look dramatically better considering he added all that weight to his bench press. Person one, on the other hand, is probably going to look worse than when he started because he's bench pressing the same exact weight as he was before and he's 10 pounds heavier. In other words, he has the same exact level of strength compared to when he started, so he probably barely gained any muscle and he's 10 pounds heavier, meaning a huge chunk of those 10 pounds were probably just fat, so he's going to look even worse when he started. In fact, I would argue the single strongest indicator as to how good your bulk is going is how much weight you are able to add to your lifts. 
Now, with that being said, I wouldn't have like a set amount of weight you should be adding to your lifts throughout your bulk because everybody is going to have different goals when bulking. For example, if you're skinny and have like 50 pounds to gain, then obviously you're going to add more weight to your lifts because you are probably going to be bulking for way longer than somebody who's not in that situation. Like say you're like 12% body fat and only have like 10 pounds to gain, then obviously you are not going to be able to add the same exact amount of weight to your compound lifts as somebody who's a beginner or has like 60 pounds to gain. But overall, as a general estimate, I would say if you are able to add 30 to 50 pounds on your compound lifts over a bulk, that is going to result in a gain of a significant amount of muscle mass. Like adding that much weight will be enough where you take a before and after picture, you're gonna be like, holy sh my physique looks different. Now exercise selection is important. And honestly, I do recommend really focusing on the compound lifts because those by far give you the most bang for your buck when building muscle. But what's even more important is progressing on a given exercise. So, you know, say you absolutely hate the bench press and every time you go to do it, you hate it and you can't stick to it, then obviously don't do the bench press. Instead, just simply pick a different chest exercise. Even if you picked like the chest machine, but added like 30 to 50 pounds on that machine, then your chest is going to significantly grow. I highly, highly encourage you track progress. Seriously, go to the gym with a notepad, write down how much weight you put up last workout and how much weight you put up this workout. You need to be tracking progress. Or you could just simply open the notes app up on your iPhone, that's what I personally do. But still, regardless, the point is you need to be tracking your lifts. If I see somebody at the gym writing things down on a notepad, I'm not like, haha, this dude's a loser. I'm like, no, this dude knows exactly what he's doing. Seriously, I instantly assume they're an experienced lifter. Now, this is also why you shouldn't be switching up your workouts every single workout. It drives me crazy when people do that. That is one of the biggest mistakes you can be making. You should be following a very structured workout every single week. Say you hit push day A on every single Monday, every single Monday should be the same exact push push day A, and then your push day B should be slightly different. The reason being is because it's impossible to track your progress and track your lifts if you are changing up your workout every single time you lift weights. If you wanted to completely restructure your workouts every like two to three months, then that's fine. But ideally you wanna have like a two to three month period where you're sticking to a very structured, similar workout routine because you can actually track progress and see if you're getting stronger on lifts or not, which is the single main driver for muscle growth. I cannot stress this enough. You need to be focusing on getting stronger on your compound lifts every single workout. Every single time you step into that gym, you should be focused on A, increasing the weight, or B, adding a rep at the same weight. Increase the weight or just increase the rep at the same weight. And then once you increase the rep at the same weight enough times, just simply increase the weight. You will have a massive chest when 275 on bench press becomes a joke. Not by going to the gym with no plan and just winging it, doing all these random exercises, probably for like three sets for 12 reps with absolutely no idea if you're getting stronger or not. That is a terrible idea. You need to take advantage of adding weight to your big lifts during a bulk. I am telling you guys. So yeah, that is my full bulking guide. That is exactly what I would do if you're looking to bulk this winter. I hope this video helped you guys out. If it did, make sure you leave a like and subscribe. That would really help me out. Feel free to leave a comment down below if you have any questions or there's any other topics you would like me to go over. Thank you guys for watching this video. Peace.